Who you on tape now?
All right, we're going to sing My Savior Lives. I'm going to let you sit for this, okay? Great, 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 great
Thank you. 
And by the time we got, she got out of there, me and Julie had polished them all. <coughs> Every one of them. And we had a good time. We, we had some shrimp down there and everything. It was fabulous. Well, anyway, uh, I was, you know, I, I always want to sort of try to be encouraging uh, when I'm preaching. Because there's a lot of discouraging stuff going on in the world today. And of course, there always has been. I don't know why people were so surprised. I mean, you read the Old Testament, you know, they cut people's heads off. I would have liked to see what the media would have been like in Old Testament times. <laughs> They'd have had a lot to cover us, <laughs> especially with Isaac and Jacob and those guys. Wow, you know. And, uh, but anyway, uh, and all these people, they just went out. <coughs> David's army went out, routed the Lord, uh, routed them and everything. There'd be a lot to cover, but I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the world, and it always has since the fall. You know, Adam and Eve ate the fruit. <laughs> We're all suffering. We're all have this problem of, of sin and everything. But I don't, you know, there's. You can list all those, all those discouraging things, but we're going to talk about this uh, this evening. Why do I always want? Why do I want always want to say this morning? You have that problem? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we're going to talk this morning. And it's dark as night now. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, a church when you become a Christian, you get into the ministry. Whether you are technically in the ministry or not. And church is not just something that you go to. Church is an activity. And church is not the building. Church is people. We're all members of the church. And when you become a Christian, you get into the ministry. And you go into training, uh, hopefully, and you learn what to do, and you have a mission, or you have a race that is marked out for you to run. And what you need to do is ask yourself, what do I have to do to get to the finish line? Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, sums up a little bit of what we're going to talk about today. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. I'll give you time to get there. Have you ever been to a meeting and somebody says, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3? Therefore, since we are coming, by the time you get there, everybody's finished. And then, what did I turn there for? Therefore, since we are surrounded, by such a great cloud of witnesses. Now they're talking uh, in the previous chapter, of course, was the faith chapter. They talked about Noah and Abraham and, and uh, all those people that had great faith and followed God's God instructions, Gideon, all that. Uh, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sin, from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Yeah, the first thing, we we do have the first part of the mission, and the first thing we're taught to do when we become Christians is to go into all, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. Matt, uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not will be condemned. Now, the Greek for that go into all the world means as you go, as you go into your life, 
as you go to school, as you go to soccer game, wherever you go, as you go to work, tell people about Jesus. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news. It doesn't say anything about bringing up all their problems. It says preach the good news. So, you know, if we go around and, and lose our patience and try to, try to just, you know, you're going to ask and all that kind of uh, that's just not going to go over because it's really kind of not what we're commanded to do. It says to preach the good news and to preach it. Uh, and the Bible in, in Second Peter, no, First Peter chapter three says, um, "Be always ready to give an answer for the hope that's in you, but do it in love and compassion." And it's good news. It, now, if it's good news, everybody says, "Now, boy, we're going to preach the good news." What is the good news? Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. He conquered the thing that we fear the most. Now, is that good news to you? Yes. It is to me. And if we and we find something that's good news, what do we do? Well, we talk about it. Let me uh, give you some well-known uh, things that are talked about a lot. Ohio State Buckeye. Cleveland Browns, Pittsburgh Pirates, West Virginia Mountaineers, uh, special TV program. Uh, there are things that people talk about around the water, around the quote water cooler. I never. What is what is that? What they say? Somebody help me when they say they talk about it around the water cooler. Is that a fountain? I've never seen anybody standing around the water cooler. Maybe around the coffee pot. I don't know about what. But, you know, now we even have special TV channels for football teams. Steelers, 24 sub. I mean, what in the world are you going to do listening to the steel, about the Steelers 24 hours a day? You probably hear some stuff that you really don't want to hear. Stuff that they probably shouldn't talk about and all this. But they have it. 24 hours a day. Steelers. And so we talk about things that mean something to us, and we communicate it. And when you do that, uh, you're going to encounter opposition. It's one of the things that's going to happen when you talk about sports. You're going to encounter opposition. And when you talk about Jesus, you're going to encounter Opposition. Now, uh, if you're ever, if, you know, if you are in training and you're learning the Word of God and you get out there and all of a sudden somebody asks you, Are you saved? You don't want to be red faced and stammering and saying, Oh, 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 and, but you want to be ready to say, yes, I am. I'm ready to tell them the good news and say, Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, the Lord, the King of Kings. And you, uh, if you need to get with him if you want to have eternal life. And um, so, if, but people are going to be opposed. Just like when you talk about Ohio State, the Michigan fans are going to go, ah, oh, yeah, right, I think. And if you talk about the Cleveland the Steelers, the Cleveland Browns are oh, But you're going to get that when people talk about when you talk about Jesus. But you're going to get it in a probably in a, a worse way. Um, and Jesus put up with a lot during his earthly ministry with opposition. Most of that opposition was from the religious leaders of his day. And, you know, I think sometimes you can find the same thing. All these people that seem to want to know everything, and you take somebody out that just appreciates the love of God, and they'll just say, yeah, I want to follow Christ. Let's go. But we've got to tell them that if you do follow Christ, you're going to have opposition. And um, 
the, 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 the apostles, you know, they were just people like you and me. Uh, you know, Peter and, and John and James were fishermen, and Matthew was a tax collector and all that, but they all agreed to follow Christ. But they, as they were following him and he was trying to teach them, sometimes they didn't get what he was trying to tell them. They were looking for an earthly kingdom and position in it. Remember when uh, one of them's mother comes and says, Make it my son, one son on the way, and one son on the way. You know, make them, make them have position. But Jesus was, of course, not talking about an earthly kingdom. He was talking about a spiritual kingdom that can't be shaken. But you know what? You know what's really good for you and me? He never got rid of those guys. He put up with a lot of stuff about them, but he never got rid of them. One of them chose to leave himself by betraying Christ and then going out and taking his own life. He made those choices. And the Bible seems to prophesy that he made those choices, but he wasn't set up for that. He made the choice that they knew, you know, they knew it was going to happen, but he wasn't really. Some people say, well, I don't want to follow Jesus because I'm going to get set up for something like that. Well, God's not like that. If he knows that something's going to happen, you know, it happens. But I wish I had more time to explain that. No, it's got to be. But, uh, but he, uh, they, they didn't get it. They didn't get the mission. And so, uh, Jesus was went from a place where he was glorified, where he was praised and honored, to a place down here where he was misunderstood, denied, betrayed. Everything that we go through, he went through, and with that one of the things that he went through was opposition. And as he hung on the cross, they were laughing at him and they were mocking him and everything. But you know what? He went on and he completed that mission, and we ought to be very, very thankful. He could have just threw up his hands and said, all right, be that way. That's what we do. You know, so we start something, boy, we want to do this great thing, and somebody opposes us. Oh, that don't to work. We've never done it that way before. What do you think you're doing? And I'm sure, you know, some people did that with Jesus, but we've got to go on and complete our mission like we did, like Jesus. Um, and, uh, you know, you, there's times when you might find yourself uh, being the only one for Jesus. You ever been there? There was a bunch of people and you mentioned something about Jesus and, well, you guys can probably see everybody's faces turn red, but, you know, I can tell too, you can feel the tension in people opposing them. But one of the things that I learned about opposition, we went um, out uh, and I went to a baseball game in 1993 in St. Louis. Yeah. And we were there, and we the, the Cardinals were playing the Atlanta Braves. And at that time, we were Braves fans, me and Alan, because that's what we listened to. So there we were in Bush Stadium, 25, 27,000 Cardinal fans. And what, 10 or 12 Braves fans? But you know, we let everybody know whose side we were on. You know, we, when the Braves did something, we clapped. Yeah, all right, yeah. But we didn't turn around and say, See there? I told you they could beat them. Yeah, who do they think they were anyway? We didn't talk to fans or anything like that. We just, we made sure that we applauded. The people knew. Whose side we were on, but you know, we didn't do anything crazy. And that's the problem a lot of times when people have an opportunity to um, present Jesus, they just go, they go nuts. And they just, they fly off the handle or something and say really crazy things instead of keeping themselves under control, let the Holy Spirit help them out. But that's hard to do because, man, there's sometimes you just like to really lay in and tell them what for. But we're just telling the good news. And we're to tell them that, you know, that God is, is God and he, he has his way of doing things and, and we need to follow him. 
And, you know, could you see a guy in a stadium with uh, 25,000, one of the Braves, 25,000 fans in the stadium. He's up to bat, he could win the game. He says, man, I, I better not hit that home run. These guys are jumping. They're not thinking like that, are they? They try to do everything they can to accomplish the vision. Win the game. And we say sometimes, well, I better not say anything about God. They might boo or something. Well, yes, they will. They will do it because that's what opposition does. So we face, we have the responsibility of presenting the good news to people, and we have to have the strength to put up with the opposition that's going to come because the legion is going to come. And just, you know, there have been times when I've talked to somebody and I know they're going to oppose me. You ever do that? You stand up there and your mouth dries up and you look for going with what you can't hardly really get a word out. But you take a deep breath and you, uh, there was a guy down at the mall at uh, Charleston. He just was totally opposed to Christianity. He was a chemical engineer. He was retired. And I tried to talk to him about Jesus. Oh, I don't know. He, he said, I don't believe that, that God put all his eggs in one basket with Jesus Christ. You know, what about all of those other guys? And I said, well, you know, that's, that's, not, that's what God did. He sent Jesus. His only Son, whosoever believes in Him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I went on, I talked to him for a good while. And uh, his name was Virgil. And he was just totally opposed to what I was saying. And so one, one day, I came to the mall. And uh, they said, hey, Mark. Virgil's looking for you. <laughs> oh, gee. What's he looking for me for? So I go up to the mall. He usually hung around Chick fil A where Ruthie worked. Julie worked there too for a while. You know, Ruth, I used to go up there to see her. I had to learn my way through town center to go to see Ruth. I have to. Yeah, that's just my life. I had to get up there. I'm the only one that rode the bus to the mall and rode back in my own car. <laughs> <laughs> but Virgil, oh man, oh. so I went up to Chick fil A and all of a sudden, hey, man! I'm thinking, yeah, Virgil. Oh, Mark, I, 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 I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I've been telling you about God, but he still never came to I wish I had a happy ending for him. But he still never, you know, he still never came to Christ. But he wanted me, as soon as he found out something was going on, he was like, Yeah, you know, I cared about him. That's right. And that's the kind of people we have to be if we're going to be Christians. Jesus did the same thing. You know, people came to him and they didn't appreciate it. You know, I, I hear a lot of people say, They don't appreciate it. Well, I probably not. A lot of people don't. That's the way like Julie told me one time, it is what it is. Yeah. But Jesus did, and that's how he was acting. And even in the face of opposition, uh, we had to we have to remember that he's the same. He's, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Joseph, our hero Joseph of the Old Testament, not Mary and Joseph, but Joseph, the one that got sold into Egypt, he had to remember that. He had to remember that God was the same. He was going to stay with him. And he stuck with God even through un unfair accusations followed by imprisonment. He was in prison for three years because he was accused of something that he didn't do. That's a long time when you come to the end of the But God delivered him, and he found out he could trust him. And he gave him 
charge, second command over his over Egypt, and he ended up saving the lives of his whole family. And Jesus, you know, he'll do things with you if he finds out that, that he can trust you. Even through opposition. But there's uh, you know, when you when you're in, in the game, you have to okay, then after that, after your training, and then after you find out, you know, you have to get after your training, you have to get in the game. You have to you just don't come to church and come to church and come to church and come to church. You have to do the things. You have to go out into all the world, tell people the good news. And you'll make you'll probably make a few mistakes. They do in baseball, but you know, if, they, if the shortstop makes an error, he doesn't have time to cry about it because the next ball might be hit. And that's really hard to do. That takes a lot of professionalism. But we're in a battle with an opposing team. Not just politics, but the big enemy who is out to destroy us all, the devil, Satan. And he loves it when our culture says, well, we got not from Satan. We don't really believe him anymore. And Satan's going, ah, uh, 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 I got these guys. But we can do it with the strength that Jesus gives. We've got to encourage each other along the way. And even when we don't get encouragement, we must continue if we really want to get there and get to the finish line. Take people with us. Spur one another on, says the truth. <coughs> None of us knows exactly what will happen to us. But whatever happens in your life, stay with Jesus. Please, because one day, Jesus is going to come back. And he's going to take us, take his church, and those that are faithful. And all earthly possessions will vanish, and we won't be able to boast about them anymore. We won't be able to say, I got this and you don't. Because it's all going to vanish, and the only thing that's going to be left is that you have a relationship with Jesus. That's the only thing that's going to happen. It's the only thing that you're going to hang on to when everything finishes. It's the blood of Christ. <coughs> Contact that blood. Remember Passover when the angel passed over the houses of the Jews because they had the blood of the Lamb on them? Do you have the blood on you? Have you given yourself to Christ? The Bible says to believe that he's the Christ. To repent of sin. To be buried with him in baptism. You know, the Bible says to be buried. It says, don't you know that all of you have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Yeah, he's buried. And if you bury him, then you're going to raise him. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. People, we have to do more than walk in and out of this building and hear sermons and sing songs. That's good. That should be the thing that fuels us. And then as we go out and we face off, we do our mission and we face opposition and we finally come to the finish line. Some runners, you ever watch the Olympics and you ever see those guys when they get to the finish line? What happens to some of them? They collapse. <coughs> They're just done. They gave their all. And that's what Paul said at the end of his thing. I have fought the good fights. I have finished the race. I have Kept the faith, therefore, uh, the crown of uh, God has set before me the crown of grace. I don't have all that scripture, but that's basically what he said. So remember, you're a Christian. Your responsibility is to spread, spread the good news despite opposition and to tell people who Jesus is. And to get to the finish line yourself and to bring people with you. And like I said, believe that Jesus is the Christ, to repent of sin, 
to be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's really simple, isn't it? It's too simple for some people, especially theologians, they just have them. I don't know what, where they get some of the words they come up with. But that's the simple truth. And so, you know, you haven't done that, you haven't become a, you haven't done all that and obeyed Jesus. Do that tonight, don't wait. If you feel it maybe, you know, I've just been coming to church, I've been walking around the building, I've been singing songs, but I haven't given anything else. I haven't told one person about Jesus or mentioned to them about Jesus in my whole life. And I've been a Christian for 50 years or something. You know, it's time to get in the game. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation tonight. And uh, if, uh, you know, but the, the, the invitation is never closed after the song. No, it's always open. Yeah. And uh, if you, uh, until Jesus comes, yeah. And you, yeah, until Jesus comes, then it's too late. And uh, don't wait. Please don't wait. Let's see, I got to think. When I do this thing in prison, I lose my. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, Jesus, have thine own way. Let Jesus have his way with you. Say, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Stand up. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the Father, I am the way. Hold me and make me after thy will, while I am with thee. Second verse. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Search me and try me. Master today. Fire and snow, Wash me just now. As in thy presence, I be thy God. Last words. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Hold over my grief. As a Fill with thy spirit till our hearts are Christ only always
radio with us. And then it'll sell you. We have the Chick fil A song. That'll learn you from going out on Sunday to team. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to imagine as we close down that the opposition sometimes will come from the very church of those who claim to follow Jesus Christ. From 1827 to 1830, during the restoration era of our country, where folks were coming to the church to the Bible, the congregation that was not yet located on this particular parcel of ground, they were actually seeking to come out of denominational bondage into New Testament Christianity, Christians only, and the Lord's Supper of the Lord's Day, and uh, the practice of baptism by immersion for salvation. It took about three years for that transition to take place. And half of the congregation that was here was for return to the New Testament and Bible training. By the way, the other half was opposed to it. And it was knocked down. I don't know if it's knocked down drag out, but the history, our history books record that. Of the one that wrote the history of the whole of the congregation. And after about a year and a half of this struggle, the group that didn't want to return to New Testament ways, they left.